Welcome back to school. Welcome back, everybody. Hey. Welcome to our training for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, we have some new faculty members, and there will be a video coming out about them. Um, Mr. Call is one of our new faculty members. And then, um, let's see, you guys can slide back first. Yep. Yep. And then we have um, Allison Ball, she will be one, and Sarah Larson. Samantha Elliott, Lori Martinson will be here only third trimester. She's going to be taking um, some of our USU FHD classes. Yeah. Um, and then Nathan Toll, he came to us at the right after Christmas break last year, and then we went into soft closure, and so a lot of you maybe didn't get to know him, but he was a trooper and he taught right through and. Anyway, we want to make sure that he, we, you know he's on our faculty this year too. Um, this year we will do our faculty meetings on the first Wednesday of the month at 7 o'clock, just like we did last year. Um, they may be in Canvas to start out with at first um, until we can get some better social distancing. Um, then we will go back to the choir room. We may do them in the auditorium as well, just whatever is needed. Um, we have some well, happy back to school shirts for you. Mark will show you those. And then on the, do they have backs? Oh no, they don't have anything on the back. <laughs> so this year we're doing our hive mentality and one of the assignments in this um, Canvas course will go over that a little bit. Um, but hive stands for hard work, integrity, vision, and engagement. And those are the four main things we wanna incorporate this year. So as you're greeting your students and setting up your routines and going through your classroom rules, if you can connect that back to hive, um, and those are the same things we want, same traits we want our faculty members to display as well as our student body. Um, okay, we're gonna go to Mark now. All right. When you wanna go to the smaller, you click there and then it will let you get on. Cool. Okay, uh, it's glad to be back with everybody. I am going to show you how to Go to our computer lab sign up document. So if you go to www.behs.bes.net, our wonderful webpage. We're going to get that up to nice, have a nice picture of uh, Mr. Call there. Um, if you go to for faculty right here, you go down to faculty Google Forms. There's a lot of really nice Google Forms here that you can use. So you click on that. You have computer lab sign up, the suburban sign up if you need that for something. Uh, they can see the calendar as well to see when it's available. Bus request spreadsheet, auditorium sign up, choir room sign up, common sign up. There's also some academic um, things as well down there. You can see that. So, um, what you want to do is click on the computer lab sign up. It takes you to this wonderful document. Now, I changed it this year so that you can see more of the month. Uh, on one page as opposed to having to scroll down through you know <laughs> lots of lines of data so uh, when, when it's available you can go ahead and put your name in there and schedule the the uh, media the media center or uh, p2 is going to be available so there you go that's how you sign up for the computer lab another thing um, we wanted to talk about is, um, let's see, so is that whole screen now? Yeah, that's whole screen. Yeah. Okay. So another thing we're going to want to talk about is information to have ready for a sub. And this is also good for you to have um, anytime anyway. So if you want to create a binder or a folder uh, of this information, that would be highly recommended. So we need you to have uh, health concerns and diabetic information available as well as 504 and IEP accommodations for your students. So, like I said, if you have a folder or a binder that you can have, it's really good to put all of that information in that uh, binder each trimester or as you get new students so that you can use that for your own use as well as uh, when subs come. The subs do need to be uh, notified of any of those concerns or, you know, um, accommodations that need to happen. Um, when they come to sub for you. So um, there you go. On to Mr. Call.
Hey, um, just talking about lockdown drills and uh, fire drills and all that stuff. Because of issues with uh, shortened day, we've actually postponed the minimum amount of time that uh, we can do. We can actually, we'll do the first fire drill in the first 30 days of school instead of the first 10 days of school. Um, so that, that will be a little different this year. We'll postpone that until we are in school full time um, on regular days. Um, also, just a reminder for lockdowns, when we, when we do our lockdown drill, remember that we um, close and lock all the doors. We make sure if we have blinds that they're closed, um, we barricade the door, step away from the door to, to somewhere as safe as you can be and be as quiet as you can be. Remember, cell phones uh, turned off. We're not on our phones during that time. And uh, please remind the students that in particular. Um, and yeah, that, that's what we have going on with our lockdown drills. So we will get those dates out to you, the exact days that we're doing all those drills, so you know beforehand. And uh, we'll be doing that later. So that's what we got. All right, just one reminder this year, as we're moving forward with field trips and activities with your groups and teams, uh, make sure you notify us if you're going somewhere. And um, all travel needs to be approved, especially overnight travel. That's not happening right now unless it's for some kind of UHSAA-sponsored competition or, tea or game. Um, please email us, give us a heads up, let us know. And then when you're out in public, make sure you're masking up and following the guidelines that we should be following. Um, just raising a lot of concerns when our teens and kids are out there and we're not following the guidelines that the governor has given us. So just make sure you're enforcing that. Okay. Stop. I just to say thanks, everybody. Hello, my name is Allie Ball, and I'm teaching online lab and drill this year. What is the dumbest way you've been injured? Uh, I don't know. Okay, start over. Do I have to start all the way over? No. Just start. I'll clip it together. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't really get injured. <laughs> I am Samantha Elliott, and I'm going to be teaching study skills and team teaching with ELA. What is something I would never guess about you? I'm double jointed. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah Larson. I'm going to be team teaching language arts and teaching study skills and happy to be a box elder. Okay, what is your most unusual talent? Oh. Um, I can crochet and sew and things. I guess that's kind of unusual for yeah, these for sure. days. Yeah. It's I... unusual for me. Hey, I'm Mr. Call. I'm uh, taking Randy's spot, new administrator here at Box Elder. Glad to be here. Go for it, Mark. If you could shrink down any animal and carry it around in your pocket, which one would you choose? I would definitely pick a penguin. So they could be little cute penguins. And why? Um, uh, you just have to ask my family. I tease my kids that they're penguins all the time, so I just to be silly. So there is my favorite random animal. So one day when your office is filled up with penguins, you uh, we'll, know why. we'll know why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to our 2020-2021 um, COVID plan for returning students to our building uh, for Box Elder High School. Uh... Are you wearing a mask? Are you burn the acid or something like that? Oh no, it's just they're terribly comfortable. I think everyone will be wearing them in the future. There we go. Um, the purpose of what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the plan for our school. And what I, we want you to remember is we can only do our very best. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do our best at everything we can. We're going to stay calm and we're going to be positive because our attitude is going to have the most influence on how our students feel. And we want them to feel calm and positive as well. So. We're just going to do the best at the things that we can do, and we're going to stay calm, and we're going to be positive. All right, you're going to hear this multiple times throughout our wonderful COVID training today, but communication is key. That's communication with students, communication with parents. We just need to do a really good job of communicating. So there's a number of different um, tools you can use to do that. Here's a few examples. Class Tag, Class Dojo, Remind, GroupMe. Um, there are tools in Canvas that you can use. We can 
communicate with students and parents through Aspire. So the biggest thing is that we are communicating um, with our students and parents effectively. And um, we will talk about that more in another training coming up, but it is going to be one of our overreaching goals for Boxster High School uh, this year. So uh, just really focus on communicating with your students and parents. Okay, so just a little bit about online and what that's going to look like. Um, currently, we have about 125 students enrolled in online. Some of those are dual. We don't have the exact number on who's strictly online and who's dual, but that's how many have signed up for some kind of online option. You will be the face-to-face -face teachers. Um, there is a chance that classrooms will be quarantined, or are there are chances that you, our students, will be quarantined, chances that a whole class will be quarantined, and the chance that our whole school could be shut down again. And we'll get into some of those details a little bit more. Um, just know that those are different, um, but because you're not the online teacher, that doesn't mean that you may not have to teach online sometime throughout the year. You will teach your face-to-face -face students online if something happens in our building. Students who have signed up for the online or dual enrollment option, this one up here, that will be ran differently. So you're not their teacher, but you are your face-to-face -face student's teacher. And so as we go through these changes with quarantines, you will still continue to teach them. So get as much as you can online. It's gonna save you a headache because you're gonna to have to still get information to those students. Okay, classroom organization. Um, please get your room set up with minimal items. Uh, we have, if we have less items in the classroom, we have less items to clean and less items to worry about. Also, we need more as much space as possible. They, uh, they, the number we'd like is 90% of the space in the classroom must be for students to space them out as much as possible, okay? Um, now, uh, also we want, uh, obviously there needs to be a teacher desk in there, but yeah, spread your desk out as close to six feet as we possibly can. Um, and that's our goal. Uh, the less stuff you have, I know uh, teachers can sometimes um, kind of have a little extra stuff in their classroom. Time to clean it out, okay? Do our best to have the most open and inviting classroom we can have. Also, try not to have only one way they can enter into the classroom. Try to have it as open as possible, you know, um, so just to um, mitigate congregating of students as, the, as they're entering or exiting the classroom. Okay. All right, so uh, getting your lesson plans and signage onto, okay, getting your lesson plans onto Canvas, okay? Uh, last spring, we encouraged our teachers to get everything on Canvas, and we know a lot of you have done some amazing work over the summer to, to make that a reality, so thank you so much. Uh, you guys are doing wonderful at this. If you are not comfortable with Canvas or you need some help with it, let us know and we can get you the help that you need. Okay, there's a lot of resources out there available that we can we can use to help teach you. Uh, if you haven't taken the Canvas 101 course yet, please get signed up to do that. Uh, there's some really good, simple steps and information there that can help you as we uh, transition to putting everything on Canvas. Because the reality is that at some point, I mean, we're, we're gonna have students that aren't in our classes and they're gonna need to keep working on their work. And so, really your class should operate out of Canvas uh, all the time. So um, with that, uh, moving on to hygiene. It's important that we establish routines with our classes on uh, proper hygiene, okay? Um, and, and Jamie will talk about that a little bit more um, in a minute. But we need to reinforce those routines uh, in our classrooms each each day and um, we need to be, be, be very explicit about that. We can't not do it, okay? Um, it has to be something that is a high priority for all of us. And as students go from one class to the next, and as, as we are all doing this together, they will get it, it'll become normal for them. It'll become the new normal. Um, and that's just, that's just the way it needs to be. We will have signage uh, up all over the school about physical distancing and uh, maintaining that six feet and coughing into a tissue, um, wearing a mask, all that kind of thing. You can see that uh, on, on that uh, poster there on the bottom right. Uh, there are some of those posters or posters available to print off. If you, this link, if you click on this link, which you'll have access to this PowerPoint as well. 
and click that link. It'll take you there. We need signs up in your classrooms as well. So if you'll pr please print those off. Or if you have others that you have, other you know that you've gotten some other other place, that's great. Uh, it's going to take all of us working together to make this happen, and it'll just it'll just be the new norm, right? It's, it'll be what we do. So um, keep doing the awesome work that you're doing on that, and uh, we'll keep working together to to do all these things we need to be in school. Um, that, and that's what it boils down to. We have to do this so that we can be in school. So thank you so much for all that you have done and are doing to to make this a, a reality for us. We're, with the um, with the signs, we're not expecting you to use your own money to to print uh, to print those off or, or to you know to make those. We we will print them off for you. We can get that for you as well. Um, so yeah, do not use your your personal money to print off signs for your room. Um, we'll we'll help you out with that. So next, uh, positive reinforcement. Um, this is going to be a strange year. You're going to have to teach um, a lot of older kids things uh, what uh, you know you think would be pretty basic and might not be. Things like wearing a mask. How can we positively reinforce that appropriate behavior? Okay, um, we're going to see a lot of kids like struggling with it. I know uh, we at least have a couple of weeks on shorter days. Um, but find ways that we can reinforce appropriate behavior and make sure we do give students time in during the class to take off their masks. But when it's time to mask up, it's time to mask up. Okay. I know there's going to be a lot of um, just normal teacher answers on ways to reinforce appropriate behavior. Um, if you have any great ideas, specifically with masks or hy hygiene, teaching that again to, you know, 11th graders, um, you know, maybe, maybe they could, uh, you know, work on that and, uh, if you can shoot us ideas, we'd love to take them and send them out to the whole faculty. So um, just make sure we're good with, with that. All right. Um, sanitizing and cleaning. So we need to be really protective of what our custodians are being asked to do. They aren't getting any extra hours or are they getting any extra help? and they're being asked to do a lot more and some different things than they've been asked to do in the past. So we need to really protect them and not create more for them to do. We need to be just really thoughtful about the things we're doing. Um, just some information things, items that have been contaminated need to be left out for three days before they can be used again, or we need to sanitize them. So our custodians will have some spray bottles, big sprayers like you spray on your yard, um, and they'll be using that to sanitize rooms and bathrooms and bleachers and everywhere where you need to have sanitized. Um, teachers, we will be giving you a bottle of cleaner and multiple rags each day. Um, so we're asking you to be uh, just thoughtful about the amount of rags you use. If you give a rag to every student um, every hour, we have 74 classrooms. That's going to be over 3,000 rags if everyone did that that would need to be washed. So I'm not asking you to do use dirty rags, but I'm asking you to be careful and thoughtful about what you're doing. Um, one, what we would like to have happen is after each class, someone goes with a squirt bottle and they spray the desk, and then someone comes behind with one rag and wipes down all of the desks. Um, the rag's got the cleaner on it, so it's not going to be the contaminated part right off the bat. Um, as far as cleaning your Chromebooks goes, you'll want to spray the rag with the cleaner and then wipe the Chromebook down with the rag. Don't spray your Chromebook with cleaner. That'll ruin it. Um, and you can have students help with this. So for the first two weeks, you have a little bit longer during your class period so you can help get those routines set up so that we can do it faster when we get back to regular schedule. Um, there's going to be some changes in what the custodians can do. So... Um, like vacuuming and stuff. Let's be, there's things we can pick up and we can keep our rooms clean so that they're not getting bombarded and overloaded with so much cleaning where they're sanitizing now. Um, and let's let our students help. Let's let them wipe off the desks and the Chromebooks and let's um, just train them and all have a positive attitude about it that this is what we want to do so that we can stay open and that we can keep having school and we can keep everyone healthy. We're all going to pitch in and we're going to help and we're going to keep our room and our building clean and it's, it's not a bad thing to do. All right, so for the first two weeks of school, students will have a grab-and-go lunch. So 
For our students who ride the bus, they'll get their lunch, they'll sit in the commons, and they'll eat their lunch from 11.30 to 11.50, at which point they will go on to, they'll leave, okay? Everybody who doesn't eat school lunch and doesn't ride the bus can just leave at 11.30. Um, so um, from, during that time, we need all hands on deck to help us with physically distancing our students in the hallways and in the commons. So if we can get your help to do that, we, would, we, we need everybody to help. And then after, when students are, are gone from at 11.50, will be when you can eat your lunch, your duty-free lunch, from 11.50 to 12.20. We obviously, uh, you know, allow you to use your, your professionalism in that and whatever, if, however it will work best for you. But um, that will be for the first two weeks of lunch with our students here. Now, after that first two weeks, um... We are going to have to adjust our lunch schedule uh, to allow for staggered movement. So that means what is that we will have half of the school go to lunch 10 minutes early one week, and then the next week uh, the other half of the school will go to lunch 10 minutes early to help us with that physical distancing that uh, we are being asked to do to help uh, keep our students safe. Okay. So during those times, we will um, just make the adjustments needed to, to allow us to provide lunch for our students and, and uh, get everyone fed um, in, the, uh, you know, in the time allotted that we have. So thank you. So, you know, we appreciate everyone who will be helping us during those first two weeks to, to make that successful. And uh, it'll be exciting to see where we go you know, from there. So, all right. All right, so for the first two weeks of school, we have a minimum day. Um, school will be out at 11.50. Lunch will start at 11.30. We are going to need all hands on deck from 11.30 to 11.50. Um, we want to keep our students socially distanced the best we can. We're going to be starting to train them on lunch. It will be grab and go, like Mark said. But we need everyone out in the halls. Everyone will need to have masks on when we're in the hallways um, so that we can get those kids to get their lunch quickly and eat it before they go get on the bus. We don't have a lot of students that will eat the grab and go lunch, but let's have all of us out there working together. Um, and then we'll take our lunch after that and we'll do our, our work and prep. Um, but we need to get our students trained and it's going to take all of us doing that. Um, the faculty works all day. Um, there's no students in the building after 11.50. No activities can begin until 3 o'clock. Um, this time is for custodians to work on cleaning the building, washing rags, and it gives you time to prep for the next day and then get those, let those assignments online so that if there is a quarantine and you have to provide work for a student who's quarantined, you have that ready to go. Or if you get quarantined, you have your class ready to go with some work. So use this time to work ahead. Um, make the most of this time. I think you'll be really glad you did after we get back to regular schedule. Okay, masks. Uh, just kind of a reminder for masks, our district policy is masks are required for all students and adults unless they can be physically distanced uh, at at least six feet. Um, masks are required at all times on the bus, at all times in the hallway, um, when we're in the lunchroom, besides when they're eating, hopefully we can space them out while they're eating. Um, in the restroom and in the office, okay? We, uh, we can get resources about masks for kids. We have a mask for every student at school, at Box Elder High School, and for every faculty member. Um, so we have those for you, and hopefully they, uh, you know, they'll at least be like one of many masks that you'll have. Um, so just make sure that we are working hard with some students. Um, there is the possibility to opt out to get a, uh, a health waiver for opting out of wearing a mask and maybe they could wear something else. At this point of recording, we have zero students who have successfully done that. So, uh, you know, but be careful because there will be some students who will not be wearing masks. But for the most part, everyone should be wearing masks. Also, please find a time in your class period to let students, you know, if um, be six feet away from each other to take off their masks, have a, have like maybe a breathing station, you know, like one person can step out, you know, and breathe a little bit with, with their mask off if they're not, if they can possibly be six feet away. So be careful with that. And, uh, here we go with masks.
Um, just a quick note on that, the, the mask thing. We don't want you to have to be play tug of war with the mask with your students. Let us know if there's students who just are refusing to do that. Please let us know. Uh, we can address that with them and, and the students' parents. So, um, you know, we're all in this, working on this together, and, and we want to be a support to you in any way we can. So, um, moving on to traffic flow. So, our wonderful um, traffic flow issues we have in near the, uh, the media center, coming down the stairs, students coming up the stairs, moving through there. Hopefully with our use of these traffic arrows that will help with that. Um, we're going to ask that everyone, you know, walk on the side of the hall that you should. So just like when you're in a car, you're going to walk on the right hand side uh, of the of the hall um, that you're going in. So um, we also want to, we're going to have hand washing signs up in the bathrooms. Uh, we're going to have hand sanitizer available all throughout the building. Um, we also ask that you allow some flexibility for students, especially during this first, you know, this first amount of time where we're just getting back to school. It's going to take some more time. We are uh, shaving off, a, for the first two weeks at least, we're shaving off a, a minute um, from their passing time. So they're only going to have four minutes um, in between classes. And the idea is, is that that will hopefully encourage them to just go right to class and not hang out by the media center or those other popular places that kids like to hang out. They're just going from class to class. But for those students who are out in the natatorium, out in the portable, and they're going all the way to the uh, the H hall or the V hall, okay, any of those halls, just just be mindful of them. And so as far as marking tardies and things like that, we're gonna have we're gonna be a lot more flexible um, uh, during that at least the first two weeks and you know pr probably the first month or so. So just communicate with us as well. We'll be out and about as much as we can helping with that as well. Um, also with flexibility, you know, students need to use the restroom. They, uh, hey, I didn't have time in between classes. Be flexible with them. Um, you know, we obviously don't want students just roaming the halls, but, um, you know, be mindful of them and their needs at that time. So um, along with traffic and, and big groups and things like that, um, we're, we're not allowed to have large group gatherings at this point because of the color uh, that we're on. Uh, so we're not going to be able to have assemblies, parties, um, and other large group gatherings for your programs currently. Uh, we hope that that will change in the, the positive direction. Uh, if, and if I, you know, we believe that if we are doing the things that they're asking us to do, that that will happen. So uh, we hope that through time that our color will allow us to do that. But as, as it is currently, uh, we can't do any of those large group gatherings like assemblies and whatnot. So. <laughs> All right, um, para options. For the first two weeks of school, um, we want to have our paras here as much as we can when students are here. So work with your paras, um, be understanding with their hours, but let's try to get them here as much as we can so they're working with students. And we'll just leave that up to you if you have a para to talk to them and work with that. Work with them and make that work. Um, we want adults working with students. Um, and then use them for what um, you need to use them for. If they're here when there's not students, let them help you get some things ready and some prep. So we want to make sure that they have stuff to do and that they're, they're working. All right. What are the symptoms of COVID? So um, if you're unsure, if a student you think may be have, having some of these symptoms, just send them to the office, okay? No questions asked. You don't, I mean, you know, just say, hey, you're not feeling well. I do think we need to have you go to the office. Um, we're going to put them in an isolated room down here, and um, we'll, we'll take care of them from there. So uh, if that is the case, if that does happen, you're going to need to sanitize their desk and any items they may have touched. Um, and then if you yourself has a symptom as well, just call us, okay? Let us know. We'll, we're not going to expect you to teach through your not feeling well uh, you know and, and I know that's hard for teachers to do because you want to be in your rooms you have lots of things you want to teach to your students uh, but times have changed such that if you're not if you're not feeling well you shouldn't be at school okay especially if you are experiencing these symptoms from COVID so um, to the right you'll see that they found that most the most common symptoms of COVID are is a loss of taste or smell um, and then as well as fevers, quite common, 
fatigue, cough is very common. Uh, and then you'll see those others there. So um, this is kind of how to tell between coronavirus, cold, and flu. Um, so, but we want you to err on the side of caution. You know, if, if a student isn't feeling well, if, if you're not feeling well, please don't feel like you can't let us know. We'll cover your class. We'll take care of that. You know, we'll, we'll make sure that you are taken care of. Um, we, we just need everybody working together on this to limit any outbreaks that could potentially happen. And if we're doing everything that we can do, um, then we'll be fine. Um, so if you can work with us on that, that would be just wonderful. Okay, so um, this information that I'm going to give you right now is information that keeps changing. And I'm sure after some of the other districts go back to school, um, it'll change again. So I'm just going to give you kind of the main details, but just know that even after we record this and you watch it, it may change. So this is what happens when teachers or adults in our building or students test positive. Um, so if your class is quarantined, you will be teaching from home. Um, we don't know for sure how many days that will be, but if the teacher tests positive, then the whole class as of right now is quarantined. So that means any student that is in your class does not come into our building, they stay home. And so the, if um, Mr. Call's class got quarantined, all of his students for every hour would be staying home. So if one of those students is in Mr. Taylor's class, then Mr. Taylor will be providing that work online for that student. Um, Mr. Call would be teaching from home, if that makes sense. Um, if there's just one student in the classroom that tests positive, those that are around them for 15 minutes or more um, will be quarantined. So um, here's a key. Don't stand by any student for longer than 15 minutes. And then if little things like that break out, you won't get quarantined. Um, so the blended online, that's what you're going to be doing. You're not online teachers, but as students get symptoms and they have to stay home or they get quarantined or you get quarantined, um, you'll be sending assignments home to them or you will be teaching from home if you're quarantined. Um, anyone with symptoms will be asked to stay home. Uh, let's see. So right now the number is if 15 in a school test positive, then the whole school is shut down, which includes athletics and activities. So if 15 of our students or adults or anyone mix of that in our building test positives, we'll be back on soft closure. The amount of that, the time of that is, we will update you, it keeps changing. Um, so just make sure we want, um, we want to do all that we can to have our stuff in Canvas so it won't be stressful when that happens because it was just going to happen overnight and then you're ready to go and you can get your information to your students. Um, we want to be following all the guidelines we've been giving, wearing, given, wearing masks, um, cleaning, sanitizing, so that we can help keep everyone safe, so that we can try to prevent outbreaks so that we don't get shut down. 15 students for a school as big as ours with 1,500 kids is not very much. Um, that could happen really quickly. So just know it is highly likely that you will have, well, it's very likely, you will have students um, quarantined for symptoms or they will be exposed to someone either in our building or somewhere else and they will be quarantined and you will need to send assignments to them. It is highly likely that your classroom may get quarantined and you may have to teach from home for a certain amount of time and it is likely that our school could get shut down. So just prepare, be prepared. The more you can get ready and be prepared, the easier and less stressful your year will go. So use these two weeks that we have half days to get as much as you can in Canvas. I know a lot of you have been doing it all summer, but I just can't stress how important that's going to be because I know we're going to have quarantines. Um, and then if our district color goes back to red, there will be no students inside of our building. And so you will have to teach um, from your Canvas courses during that time. Hopefully our whole district doesn't go back to that, but just know as the colors are changing, if there's outbreaks, um, hopefully we keep moving in the positive direction and go towards the green. But if not, just know that could happen as well. And you will still be over those students that are in your face-to-face -face classes and you will still provide them with instruction. So uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please feel free to chat with us. Um, we do ask that you, you know, there's going to be some things that uh, you're going to have to figure out for yourself, and we will support you in, in anything we can do. But, uh, yeah, if you have questions, please talk to us. We'd love to troubleshoot with you and hopefully make this as um, a great as great of a start to a year as we can possibly have. Um, so.
Thanks, guys, and we'll catch you later. Well, this is the culture team, uh, and we have something that we want to share with you that we think is extremely important. We are going into a new year with a new beginning, and with this, the end of the pandemic, we want to try and change what we do at our school. We have great ideas that all of you have helped provide for us. Um, you've all had input in this, and what we've come up with is the hive. Um, H for hard work, I for integrity, V for vision, and E for engagement. And we think that this is something that we can change what we do here as faculty and students and administration and everybody involved where we can all move in one direction. If we think about our students who are the hardest workers, they probably all have something in common. They're not just working to earn points. They're not just working to get a grade. They're trying to learn. And they do learn because they do the hard work. They do those above the line behaviors such as uh, putting in more effort than they even are required and doing their own work instead of uh, comparing themselves to others. We as faculty members should also be examples of hard work and when I think of hard workers in our faculty I think of people like Rachel Storm who came in as a first year teacher and just worked her dang butt off and Jamie Kent who is an awesome principal and Melanie Day who always does her very best to put on great performances. So as faculty members, as students, uh, as we teach our students, that's one of the things that we can do to thrive in the hive is uh, focus on hard work. When we think about integrity, we think of doing what's right no matter what, being kind, being respectful, serving, reaching out to those in need, owning up to your mistakes, thinking to yourself, uh, what am I doing when nobody's watching and what are the consequences of that? Uh, integrity would mean not bullying, not cheating, owning up to what you're supposed to be doing. That's what we're trying to embody in our students at Box Elder High School. That's what integrity looks like. When you think of people like Rosa Parks, in my brain, no one quite embodies the characteristic of integrity quite like Rosa Parks. No one quite embodies the idea of doing what's right, no matter the consequences, like her. So that's an example of someone that we might show to our students to give them an idea of what integrity looks like and what it could be looking like specifically for them. So that's what integrity is. We want our students to be able to see the beginning from the end with their mind's eye, be able to see what their goals are and know what it takes to accomplish those. We think that vision is a very important part of being a successful student at Box Elder High School. Um, if you look back at some great people who have had vision in the past, uh, one of them is USU graduate Lavelle Edwards, also the head football coach at Brigham Young University for a while. Uh, when he came on at BYU, uh, every school in the country was running the football. He came in with a vision um, to throw the football more than anybody else, and he turned a middling program into a powerhouse in the matter of a few years simply because he knew what he wanted. He went and got the people to help him accomplish that, and then he did it. And that's the kind of vision that we need our students to have. They need to see what they want, get the people around them that it takes to reach that goal, and then go out and get it. That's vision, um, and we need a lot of that at Box Elder High School. And we really want our students to be engaged. And I have some scenarios here that show the difference between being engaged mentally and physically and not being engaged mentally and physically. Here we have our hive and our bees are here, they're present, but they're not engaged, they're just sitting there. We would rather our bees get totally involved in what's going on. They might be in a musical group, they might be out on the lawn playing leapfrog with their friends, they might join HOSA, um, they might be getting ready to take a test that they've studied for, or join a club that's full of games, or perhaps contributing to the can drive, or even playing a sport. Uh, we just like them to be a part of the school and be involved. So there you have it, the culmination of values you all helped come up with for our student body. Um, we've tried to capture the concepts we felt like were most important and to have them be meaningful and relevant in building just great human beings. As part of changing the culture here at our school, we've adopted the theme Thrive in the Hive. And now that you've seen what each of the letters of Hive represent um, and have heard the concept of above the line and below the line behaviors, we hope you'll consider how to incorporate these cultural values in your own classrooms. It's built on the idea that it can be very individualized and you can make it work however is best for you. Um, but 
it's important that those things are talked about often and the above the line and below the line behaviors are consistently discussed and applied. We feel like we will see classroom behavior as well as our overall culture at our school improve greatly by doing so. As a means of emphasizing just how important the characteristics of hard work, integrity, vision, and engagement are, we're renaming the, the halls at our school. So they will now be H, I, V, and E. Uh, Patriot Hall will become Purple Hall and F Hall will become B Hall as a, as a way of incorporating more our mascot and our colors. Um, rather than having just one individual represent our hall, our vision is to have posters of many people who embody the characteristics of each of our um, values hanging for students and faculty to see regularly as a constant reminder of people who we can look to as examples. We're asking for you to help provide names of people who would be good candidates for posters to hang in our hallways. As you consider those who may be good role models, we're seeking not only um, people that the students admire and would identify with, but also a great diversity of men and women from many different cultures, races, political views, platforms, and talents. They may be historical or contemporary figures, but obviously must exemplify the values that we are trying to promote. This upcoming year is a perfect time to make a change. Um, for this to truly work though, we have to have everyone on board we need to be consistent about promoting and implementing these cultural values and do it on a regular daily basis. Let's do this. Please join us and let's make some positive changes in our culture here at Box Elder High. So you just finished watching our video that we presented in the spring with respect to our hive culture. H, hard work, I, integrity, B, vision, and E, engagement. So now we're going to give you five examples of people who represent one or more aspects of that hive culture. Um, and we want you to think about people who you would choose um, who would fit in within the aspect of your hall, H, I, V, or E. So here, let's take a look. I have chosen Muhammad Ali. We all know him for his quote, I am the greatest. And we know that he was extremely hardworking with boxing but we don't often think about the integrity, vision, and engagement that he showed during the 1960s and 70s with the civil rights movement. He was willing to give up everything, every boxing medal, and even threatened with jail time just so that he could be successful as a black African-American in our country. To me, Muhammad Ali displays every characteristic of the hype mentality. I have chosen Walt Disney to represent vision for my classroom. He said, I dream, I test my dreams against my beliefs, I dare to take risks, and I execute my vision to make those dreams come true. If you can dream it, you can do it. Walt Disney, I feel, is a perfect example of the fact that possibilities are only limited by your imagination. He started with a simple cartoon and turned it into a world-famous, award-winning animation and movie company. Walt Disney helps me to embody the characteristic of vision by helping me not to be complacent. Vision is about moving forward, having a goal, and working towards it, no matter the obstacles. That's the kind of motivation I think our students need, and I think Walt Disney does a good job of embodying that. Harriet Tubman was born into slavery, but through sheer grit and determination was able to free herself and dozens of others um, as a conductor of the Underground Railroad. She also served in the Union Army during the Civil War as not only a scout and a spy, but also as a soldier and a nurse. Um, according to Harriet, she was responsible for freeing about 70 people, um, only about five foot tall, but a force to be reckoned with. In my opinion, she encapsulates each of the Hive values. She was definitely a hard worker. She had integrity. She had a vision that wouldn't stop. And as far as engagement, she was working to help others throughout her entire life. She told me put my heart in a bag and nobody gets hurt. Now I'm running from
never love, I'm not fast. So I'm making it worse than digging up a grave. I have hard work hall, H hall. And the person that I have chosen uh, to commemorate the 100 year um, anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote, is Alice Paul, an early American suffragist who worked tirelessly in order to make that happen. One of her mottos was, when you put your hand to the plow, you don't take it off until you get to the end of the road. And to me, that exemplifies hard work. Any of us can work hard in a moment, but to take that hard work and extend it until we've accomplished the thing that is important, that is a, a true hallmark of hard work. And that is the quality, one of the qualities that I appreciate about Alice Paul. Um, she has often had negative consequences to her efforts. She was, uh, she served some jail time. She was institutionalized. Um, but even when she was held captive, she continued her efforts. She went on hunger strikes to say, hey, I'm still, I'm still going for it. And um, even though they force fed her and knocked some teeth out and some really harmful things, she continued her effort and made a difference in the world. To represent engagement, I chose Malala Yousafzai. At age 17, Malala won the Nobel Peace Prize. She was also the youngest person to win this award. In 2013, 2014, and 2015, she was chosen as one of Times Magazine's most influential people in the world. One reason she received these rewards and honors was because she stood up against terrorism in order to have the right to be educated. She wanted to be engaged in learning and believed every person had the right to be engaged in learning as well. She states, one child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. Let us make our future now and let us make our dreams tomorrow reality. We are the bees. We are part of a hive. Let's be engaged in our learning and make our dreams a reality. Now it's your turn. In the spring, we asked you to choose three people per characteristic. We'd like you to narrow that down to one. And if you've thought of new people, feel free to use somebody else. That wasn't one of your suggestions in the spring. We'd like you to choose somebody who represents you and your hallway and where you teach. So if you're an H hall, use somebody who's hardworking. If you're an I hall, somebody who has integrity, V vision, E engagement. Anywhere else throughout the school, the performing arts areas, the gyms, P hall or B hall, feel free to use somebody who represents one of these characteristics or somebody who represents all of these characteristics. When you choose somebody, Make sure to print a picture of them and post that outside of your door. We'd like students to see all of the different people that we have chosen as teachers. We'd like them to see the diverse culture that we have and how each student can be represented in one way or another. Then do a write up on the person and their accomplishments and successes that they had in their life and how they represent the characteristic. Include in your write up why you chose them and how they have some sort of personal connection to you. Secondly, if you're a club advisor or a coach or a leader over any organization, we would like to have students teach students about the Thrive in the Hive culture movement. So on the Canvas assignment, you'll see spots for you to recommend students who would be good representatives and could teach other students. Please think of your people in your clubs, your teams, and your organizations who would be great at representing the Thrive in the Hive culture movement and be really good teachers for other students. Thank you.